So here's an interesting fact, guys. If you take a garlic clove and you put it on uh, a piece of skin on your, so say your arm, put it on your arm, and you get a hot cloth um, and place that over it and leave it there, then over the course of about half an hour, um, people around you will actually be able to smell the garlic on your breath. And the reason for this is that um, the garlic can actually penetrate your skin and then it gets into the bloodstream. And then of course, when the blood um, goes around your lungs, then it gets uh, ingested and that's why people can smell it on your breath. And the point here is that um, your skin barrier is actually far more permeable than most people believe. And the reason I'm telling you this is that a lot of people um, pay no attention to the amount of chemicals that are present in topicals that they use, primarily shampoos. So if you've ever looked at the ingredients list on a shampoo bottle, it's got hundreds of chemicals of which you won't even be able to pronounce half of them. And so when, you, when you're shampooing your hair, um, there are a couple of things going on. First of which is that those chemicals are actually seeping, potentially seeping into your skin. Um, and something that can happen as a result is that it interferes with your hormones. Um, so we've got a lot of estrogenics, particularly in, a, in the plastics as well. So the plastics leak into the shampoo, the chemicals and those plastics then leach into your skin and they can uh, disrupt your endocrine and, and hormone system um, and, and that can result in systemic inflammation and, and starts a cascade that eventually results in hair loss. Another factor with shampoos is that they actually contain a chemical, you've probably heard of it, called sodium lauryl sulfate. Now the purpose of uh, sodium lauryl sulfate, or we'll call it SLS from now on, is twofold. One, it actually provides a uh, really nice lather or foam. So when you're rinsing your hair and it, it goes all foamy, that's usually because of SLS, uh, which is lovely. But the drawback is that SLS um, is a really, really powerful detergent. And what that means is that, that it can dissolve grease. And in fact, uh, industrial car washes actually use SLS as their detergent because it's so good at cutting through grease. So why is this bad for your scalp health and hair loss in particular? Well, when you've got a really powerful detergent like SLS regularly, um, that you're regularly washing your hair and scalp with, it actually strips away a, pretty much all of the natural sebum oil that you have on your scalp. So sebum is the oil that protects, nourishes and hydrates your hair. Um, and without it, uh, your hair can become brittle and dry. But what tends to happen is that people will begin using shampoos with SLS in them. And then um, what happens is they strip away the natural oils and as a result your scalp, which now is really dry, basically goes into overproduction um, and produces lots and lots of sebum oil to compensate for all of the oil that's been stripped away already. But what happens then is that someone's hair, a person's hair goes greasy and so they start using the shampoo even more regularly. And this creates a vicious cycle where um, the scalp tries to overcompensate, producing more oil. So someone starts using the shampoo even more. And um, basically it gets into a, a really vicious cycle where lots and lots of sebum is produced over time. There have actually been, why this is bad is that one, um, it can result in a chronically inflamed scalp. Your scalp's always trying to play catch up. Um, it's never in sort of a state of calm and that's not in a good place, that's not a good place to be. So we don't want to go there. Another aspect um, that is potentially bad from this is that uh, overproduction of, or production of sebum is related to production of DHT. It's a factor that plays a huge role in hair loss. And so, if your scalp is continuously overproducing sebum, that also means it's overproducing DHT. And as a result, that's gonna increase the rate at which um, chronic conditions such as fibrosis and calcification 
occur in the scalp and therefore it speeds up the rate of hair loss. So in summary, uh, not only are the chemicals that, or most of the chemicals that you see in the, on the back of your shampoo bottle potentially leaching into your scalp and causing irritation in the form of dandruff um, and, and redness and itchiness um, and potentially also messing with your hormones. It's also stripping the oil from your scalp and um, in turn that can uh, cause overproduction of DHT which speeds up uh, fibrosis and calcification. So the solution here guys is to actually reduce the frequency that you use normal commercial shampoo, um, ideally to less than once a week. Now you won't, need, but you won't be able to do that immediately, you'll need to cut down over time, say from however often if you use it once every other day, you want to start using it once every three days and so on. And believe me, your hair will adapt and um, your scalp will stop producing as much oil. It may take uh, a month or two months to get to the point where you're washing it once a week. But trust me, your hair will look much, much healthier afterwards and you won't need to shampoo every day. So the second alternative is to use a more natural shampoo, one that doesn't use all of the chemicals that we tend to see in most shampoos. And this will help by uh, not stripping away the, the natural oils that we have on our scalp and also it reduces um, the damage that's potentially done by those chemicals leaking into your scalp and, and therefore the inflammation and hormone disruption. So when you're shopping for shampoo, just have a look at the back of the bottle, see what ingredients are in. If there's lots of nice oils like coconut, apricot, avocado, that's really good. But if there are a lot of chemical names that you probably uh, can't understand, then try to avoid those. So if you're interested in anything that we've talked about today, then you can read more about it on our website at hellosrevolution.com. Or alternatively, if you want to join in the discussion with the community and myself, then visit the uh, Facebook group that we now have, uh, link below. So check it out. 